thank you guys for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, it's good to be joined. This is uh, uh, special for two reasons. I mean, one, you guys are the, you're the first duo to join us on our podcast. Um, the first, so not only do we have one super talented uh, actor, but we have we have a, a two and um, and obviously it's like. Richard, I thought, I thought you were going to say, Dustin, not only do we have one super talented actor and Richard. And I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Like I dropped the ball on my joke already. Um, <laughs> that yeah, one I'll, joke. You had one chance. Oh, anyway, we got you guys. It's great. I'll just end it there. Um, <laughs> no, All right, great talking to you guys. See you great. next time. Thanks so much. Right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the time. You've given us four and a half minutes, and that is all we can ask. That sounds so, like our wedding, wedding night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Insert rim shot. <laughs> of your caliber. I can't beat you to that one. That's yours. I cannot beat you. It to is that mine. You can't, it's you mine. Can't Did you? Well, what would, would make it even better is if you guys were in the same room at the same time. Hmm. Yes. It would be. It would be. But then we just argue. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> On your it's wedding fun. night. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I that see. went around. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. My 15 years of teaching five-year-olds, I never got that sex joke right. So. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. The five-year-olds. I, but I've could tell, I've learned a lot from my kids. That's for damn sure. So. Mm. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, this is huge. Like we were, Dustin and I, literally were uh, watching summer school the other night just to kind of refresh ourselves. And um, what an interesting time for both of you guys, right? Because because obviously, not the first opportunity you had as actors, but one of the biggest roles. I mean, obviously, Dean, you had done Fast Times prior to that, the TV series, and playing Jeff Spicoli, which is pretty remarkable. Um, <laughs> Sean Penn, who you know, but it's <laughs> Chris, Chris guys Penn's, working with Chris Penn's Carl, brother. Carl, Carl, go ahead. <laughs> 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 working with Carl Reiner, working with Mark Harmon, um, you know, Danny Elfman doing the score, like phenomenal ensemble cast who went on to continue to do amazing things throughout their careers, respectively. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, who wants to start talking about like the journey of how you got into summer school? Dean was in way before me, so I'll let him him uh, tell the story. Um, I, I actually the it's an interesting it's sort of interesting so amy heckerling who did fast times and yeah. was doing the series she was supposed to direct summer school uh and she was talking to while we were doing fast times she was talking to wally wallace langham and patrick dempsey who were in fast times this the cv series like oh i'm doing this movie and you guys are perfect for these two parts it was chainsaw and dave and I'm like thinking, I, you know, I'd sure like to be in your movie, Amy Heckling. Uh, maybe <laughs> that would happen. Thanks a lot. So, and then what happened was apparently Carl Reiner had a movie at Paramount. For whatever reason, they decided to shelve it and they gave him his pick of any script he wanted and he picked summer school. So Amy was out and wow. uh, it, the whole thing started, the whole casting process started. And yeah, and I just, I auditioned, I read it. I read the script and was like, I'm, this is my part. I'm going to get this part and uh, went in and got the part. Okay. Wow. Why wow. yeah. was there's uh... a, there's a, and there's a great audition story. The, the, the story I tell actor, young actors is, and the, the callback when I was reading with other, when I was reading with Dave's, uh, Carl Reiner gave me this directions. He goes, try, try, that was great. That was great. Try this thing. And it was horrible. It was just the worst idea in the world. Just, just awful and i'm looking at him thinking that's carl reiner comedy genius giving me the worst direction i've ever like i would not give someone that direction so i tried it it was awful he goes oh yeah yeah i was that was bad all right fine this is great get out of here so Wait, well, about, what, what was it you have to reveal i don't remember the, oh. it, it was i, I, I was, I think pausing it was like, take, or, take your pants down or something yeah. take your pants down <laughs> yeah see i'm gonna put this thing in your mouth see if you can tell me what it is <laughs> um <laughs> no that was not a that was another job so uh but so about three weeks into the shoot Carl Reiner we're hanging out waiting for stuff to get set up and he says remember uh, your audition when I told you that direction and goes, yeah and he goes it was really bad wasn't it and he goes, yeah he goes I just wanted to see if you do it because I could tell you're a son of a bitch <laughs> so, 
Hmm. So, he was right about that, right? Yeah. He was right about that. Yeah. But, uh, but no, he goes, you're a cocky son of a bitch. And I go, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, you know, sometimes a director will give you bad in- you. direction just to test you, see if you'll listen to him or not. And call your mom a bitch, basically. <laughs> exactly. Yes. exactly. Right. How dare you? He was right about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Too soon. Too, too soon. soon. Is too it soon. though? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was doing a I was doing a TV series in the early days of cable television uh, for a company called the Arthur Company. Uh, the Arthur Company is notorious because they're the ones that went on to remake every single show. They did The Munsters Today. They did 240 Robert. They did FBI, Untold Stories, all these things. But this was in their early days. And I was doing a, a syndicated show for them called Safe at Home. And um, it was we did relevant today. Yeah, we did 103. <laughs> ep- yes, exactly. We did 103 episodes in three years. Holy so that's shit. that was our schedule. But I was on a hiatus and um, I got a call from my agents at the time and said, hey, um, they're casting this film at Paramount, Carl Reiner directing, starring Mark Harmon. They need this nerd character and they're having trouble with it. Can you go in today? And it's like, yeah, okay. So I... Um, I drove to the audition at Paramount. It was Carl Reiner and um, one of the executive producers, George Shapiro, who's still a good friend. He was, um, he's Jerry Seinfeld's manager. Um, and um, I did the role of Ikean and I just read it once, twice through with Carl. He stood up, he says, get out of here, you're perfect. And, he, and they walk out and wow. I got the offer that day. Wow. And it's the fastest I've ever booked a job, but they were going into rehearsals the following week. So it was like, it had to be cast. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't make the rehearsals because I couldn't get out of my contract with the show I was doing. That's a whole nother story. I had to buy my way out of that contract. Um, wow. Yeah, because I had to pay for every week I was away from shooting the series because it was an exclusive contract. Oh, man. And I had to pay my way out. So basically all the money I was making, I was paying back to the company to get myself out, which they put under the guise of having to pay for a guest star to replace me each week. I said, why do you need a guest star every week? I mean, it's only, what was, how long was that shoot? Six weeks, Dean? Eight, eight weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks, yeah. Eight weeks shoot. And um, so... Um, that that's how I got involved. And so I had missed the rehearsal. So everybody had kind of already bonded in the classroom, like the day or two before I got there. Uh, and yeah. And Which in a weird way that kind of works then, right? Because your character is, is an outcast. The lone, yeah. The lone nerd, so to speak. I'm the, I'm the smartest of the group, except for, except for uh, the guy who goes to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. How do you get a 91 sitting on the toilet for yeah. all summer? <laughs> Gives you time to think. Perfect. They're, they were going to explore that in the sequel, but never happened. <laughs> it was all based around him in the toilet. As it should be. <laughs> I, one thing I noticed rewatching I think, it. Wait, I think, I think yeah. you're right. I, he's not kidding. It was, it was called Summer School Dropping the Kids Off at the Pool. The pool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's bad. We're better than that, aren't we, Dean? We really are. Well, you got plenty of time to warm up. So <laughs> I was going to say. This is it, folks. <laughs> These one bad joke. Jokes. <laughs> you blew one, Dustin blew one. It's Dean's yeah. turn and my turn. So it's fine. Like my wedding <laughs> night. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I gotta I gotta dig deep into my kindergarten jokes. Um <laughs> yeah. joke about pee pee and poo-poo. Uh no. <laughs> um also was... part of Dean's wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched the video of this one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Go on YouTube. <laughs> Carl Reiner is like, I knew you were a perfect kid. Um, <laughs> you cocky wow. son of a bitch. He'd be in all night long on your wedding night. <laughs> I was I, one thing I noticed in the in the film is just you know uh, kind of all over the place. But early on, when you guys uh, meet Shoop and and everyone ditches, and you guys are going to the library, you stick around with him. I and, do. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I, because I'm I'm not a I'm not a troubled kid. I'm not like a troublemaking kid. I'm, I'm more of um, I do the right thing. Except I just didn't do well on my tests, and that's why I ended up in summer school. Ikians have never ended up in summer school, so I was a disgrace to my family. So the last thing I'm going to do is buck authority. Whereas 
uh, Dean, where, whereas Chainsaw and Dave are the anarchists of the of the of the sh of the film. So that's why they all want to get there. I'm like, oh no, I've got to pass. So that's why I stay. Because I don't want to get in trouble. That's my big thing. I don't want to get in trouble. Well, it's really interesting because you guys are are such um you're not good kids, like other than Ikean. You're not. You're you're you know, these jerk kids who who really terrorize uh Shoop, you know, and 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 he's <laughs> I mean, he's not, he's, he's, he's an idiot too, in some ways, you know, it's like, he's this guy who just wants to roll through life to surfing and chilling. It's a very unique film in that way. You know, it's like, you're all anti-heroes. Well, I would, I would argue that, that, you know, Kevin was, you know, he was the jock. And so he just wasn't passing his classes. And if he wants to pay, play football, he has to. The one that I always questioned was, okay, um, so Shawnee's character is pregnant. So <laughs> she has to go to summer school. That was the only one <laughs> that I was like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> you were having sex instead of studying. <laughs> I mean, who didn't want it? Who wouldn't, right. who'd rather? <laughs> right, right. How many, uh, how many legally like vague things do you think that Shoop did during the movie? Because that was like, man, he, like you couldn't do any of the stuff today. No, oh, no. He, between you know, giving you guys or you know, taking uh, responsibility for the booze on the beach. Between like, oh, here's Pam. She's just living with me. You know, sixteen right. year old girl. It's like it was. I I haven't seen this movie in a long time, and I was like, wow, this is like. Every one of Shoop's decisions is terrible. It's really bad. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. you look you look back at it um, today through the eyes of where our country has come, or what what you know back society, then. Society. Yeah. Society has come, not just our country, but society. Right. Exactly. Um, and uh, I think that uh, you're we're looking back. Yeah. At summer school was a real societal tent pole. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> real commentary tempest, on the it was day. a tempest in a teapot. It really. <laughs> Well, I, I, I know watching it back, uh, I saw it repeatedly as a kid, repeatedly. And there's something, and, and I was always uh, curious as to what was it about that movie uh, that, that stayed with me. It, 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 there's, there are moments in that film that I'm like, it's triggering all these, you know, as you get older in life, you reflect back in old moments and you're like, oh, that, that's why I did this and that's why I did that. Um, so often when I would be, uh, like pining after a girl in high school and she'd go off with some other dude. I'd be like, you, you, you kids have fun. You know, I threw out that line that shoot oh, does. Nice. Cause I'm like, uh, I'm heartbroken. Cause I really want that girl. <laughs> Turns out she was a Scientologist and a lunatic, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I th like that film was very pivotal for me personally. Um, and then Dustin and I were like, we gotta, we gotta have Dean and Richard on our show to kind of celebrate, not just, their roles in this film, but the, the, the movie itself, because I feel in many ways, it's kind of a, a hidden gem, you know, and it often gets overlooked. You get breakfast yeah. club and you get fast times and you pretty. Yeah, we pink. know. We're aware of that. We know. We are we well aware. We're very aware Dean, of being Dean, overlooked. Oh, Dean, hmm. Dean and I have a, a funny thing that we always talk about that most of the things I do are, or he does are cult classics right. which is just another way of saying commercially unsuccessful oh. <laughs> commercial failure uh, yeah i think the movie uh i think <laughs> i think there's a, a guilelessness of, of the movie that makes it a perennial why people continue to watch it and and i don't know that because the original script was darker the character it was a little darker and meatier than it came out and at the time i was i was sort of bummed about that but I think that worked in its favor. And so you can get away with it. Unlike like Revenge of the Nerds where they, so it's yes. very rapey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you can get away with having this, you know, 16 girl, year old girl living in Mark Harmon's house because Mark Harmon would never do anything with her. You know, it, there's no, he's not like that. Mm -hmm. Th that character, Shoop, and, and it's all very innocent fun. And, you know, we want to go to an amusement park and watch a movie. I, mean, it's, uh, I was more concerned with Bo's well-being, the dog. <laughs> Wonder Mutt. Peanut Wonder butter. Mutt. Yeah, the whole yeah, time. The, dog, the real name was Bo, and Bo went on to star in uh, Married with Children. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. In Not a cult season. classic, a bonafide <laughs> no. hit. Bo's legit, huh? Wow. Bo is legit. Whoa. Wonder Mutt. Maybe the most successful of the whole cast. <laughs> 
Well, it's, uh, it, it is it is interesting though when you talk about like what what are what constitute what constitutes a cult movie versus a hit commercial hit, obviously. But I think of so many of the movies that I personally love, and then Dustin and I love, were not initially heralded as a big deal back in the, mm-hmm. the, the thing, yeah. for example, is, is a perfect uh, example yeah. of that, you know, where you look at this movie and you're like, that movie is a masterpiece and it, it is, it is yeah. a classic and it eclipses that, um, yeah. you know, teenage comedies. I, I think your film doesn't dig into the depths of like, Oh, we're just going to have a, uh, a sex scene for no reason whatsoever. Or we're going to have, you know, a, uh, gratuitous swearing up and down like it's actually it's not a wholesome film per se you right. know what i'm saying <laughs> but but it, it 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 really skirts an interesting line where it doesn't go too far one direction or the other yeah. it's really and it's well, unique in that way it, it i think that dean touched on something also and that you're touching on zach is that um you know we were we came out in the time of the you know the john hughes films as well and so the john hughes films always had like the two outsiders, which was kind of their thing, not fitting in sort of thing. And it was, you know, it had music that manipulated our emotions and stuff. And it was, you know, that, that was, that was their, that was John Hughes's voice. Whereas with ours, we were just a ragtag. We represented like the, like the, the, the cross section of high school kids that Mm -hmm. were just existing having fun like teenagers do so there was no there was no real love story in this thing at all there was none of that so it wasn't about manipulating and pulling at your your heartstrings like those other films it was just you know summer right there was and there was no real teenage angst uh yeah stuff so which which didn't age well yeah and that's true but uh overcoming a overcoming a problem does age well i think so yeah did you guys know each other before this movie? No, no, no. I love I, <laughs> yeah, I had seen just a poster in, in in the post office of Dean prior to that. There was that. That was that. And we were not talking about that. And I thought it was a headshot because I thought not, it was, we're not talking about that. Like, uh-huh. we're not talking about the that. U.S. Postal Service. You're we're not the talking best, about that. Dean Cameron. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> So what a testament to your friendship that you guys did, you know, you shot this movie for eight weeks and now you're still friends and collaborators. Well, uh, I, we lost touch for 20 good, something. Good, good, yeah, good 20 15, years. 20 years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we saw each other in passing over the years, yeah. but, but we weren't like friendly. And then Dean showed up at the same voiceover agency that I had uh, and we reconnected and, uh, to be honest with you, we reconnected. We were both kind of feeling the same about our careers at that point um, and our and our lives and where we had come from and where we were going. And uh, one day, uh, Dean said to me, hey, um, there's this this talk that this guy is giving, this guy named Jack Plotkin. Um, Plotnik. Yeah, Plotnik, sorry, Plotnik, um, is giving and you want to go with me because, you know, I, it maybe it'll help motivate us and kickstart us into following through with some of our ideas. I said, sure. And we went and we were both really just inspired by this, this lecture. And uh, that's when Dean and I just said, Hey, we could do this. We, we have enough connections and know enough people. And Dean says, I want to direct. Um, and I said, great, I want to produce. And so we just started doing our, our own thing. And that's how, that's how some kind of joke was born. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Wow. And, wow. Uh, and what what was the the Jack Plotnick? He he's a he's an acting teacher, but he he just really lets uh, coach more of an acting coach. But it's really about you do do what you want and don't worry about what other people think and enjoy yourself. Yeah, it really fell in line with just ba- real basic stuff like oh oh yeah, that's why I do this. It's just to have fun <laughs> right, and, right, 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 and pretend so- pretend and play and and do fun stuff with my friends, which is. The best part of the business. Yeah, right. and that's and that's what Dean had an idea, and Dean's idea was for some kind of joke. He said, "I want to, I want to tell jokes in a narrative form." Meaning, Take classic jokes and shoot them as narrative short films. Yeah, without and 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 the and the artistry of it or the fun of it is trying to make it so you don't know what's coming. That it so it's not like it's not a setup, but I'm bum, yeah. and and that that's more difficult. <laughs> than it seems. Um, and so Dean and I decided we're gonna shoot this and uh, 
Dean went and and he went through SAG and we got we were you know SAG in, a SAG affiliated production and we shot well we shot I guess six of them before six, six of them before the pandemic happened. But one of my favorite things that Dean came up with, which was this is this was also inspired and this is one of my favorite things we ever did was Dean knew of this green green screen studio uh, in North Hollywood and he goes. Hey, I'm gonna do this thing where I'm gonna get together, you know, like ten oh, yes. or twelve of my um, my favorite people that are good at improv, and we're just gonna. Uh, he goes, I'm just gonna give you the premise, and we're just gonna improvise. Um, the it's, so it's called Dickhead Fireman, and it's also on YouTube. Dickhead <laughs> Fireman. Have you have you guys seen any of them? <laughs> I haven't seen that one. It's, <laughs> they're brilliant. You're, you'll it's, love them. It's incredibly lo-fi, incredibly oh, lo-fi by design. Close. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, because I, I just always thought what because firemen are so venerated and heroes. Like, what if they're horrible people? And so we just so did, we like, took that premise the and we worst, ran. most horrible people. Right. And, you know, fire like yeah, my, did, my dad delivered. was a firefighter for twenty oh, years. In then you'll love it. Then watch now, this. You'll love I, it. He will. Like I'll, show, I'll share it to him because he. Uh, yeah, he's told me some stories and oh, there's some, some truth to that. <laughs> like they're so, delivering a baby and they're all disgusted and, yeah. and don't want to touch the woman and are grossed out by it. And, and um, like we have a, we have a house burning in the background and this guy's on they're his phone. Like, hey, let's take selfies. Get this. <laughs> this would be great, right? And and so, and Dean done. and I would literally meet at uh, the coffee shop that's now th not there anymore. Corky's. And we would sit down and we would just come up with like, Dean would pitch 12 ideas, I'd pitch 12 ideas. And then with as much time as we had rented the, the stage for, we just did one setup after another setup. And, and, uh, and they were all, they were all shot on iPhones, right, Dean? Oh yeah, shot all of them were shot on yeah. iPhones. Yeah, oh. and we had like a little edit, like little, uh, um, little area where we just kept, you know, uh, uploading all of our videos so we could get them off our phones so we had enough room. <laughs> Um, but they turned out really well. My, one of my favorite ones is that is there. There's a baby that they found that's been abandoned. It's crying, ah, ah, and they're just oh, right. the way Dean shot it was like from the baby's point of view, yeah. like, ah, ah, right? And so the, they're just looking, and this this one fireman smoking, he's just smoking. And he's like, ah, 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 and they they don't know. So the, the fireman takes the cigarette and puts it to the baby, <laughs> and the baby's like, ah, I got a papa, papa, yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Stuff like it's that. Absolutely ridiculous. It speaks great. from uh, your own personal life when you have childhood. Son, right? Yeah, my childhood. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Still smoking to this day. <laughs> oh my gosh, sounds amazing. Yeah, my 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 dad has. Um, I I find he's telling my son stories now that I never heard. I'm like, Dad, oh, why don't wow. you tell me this? Because he was not enlightened. <laughs> my dad now is he meditates and he does yoga. He's a former wow. Navy SEAL and a total wow. all around badass. But he's he cries now uh, every time someone says, you know, I love you. And he's like, I love you too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is a guy who That's can say I love you for dads. 25 right. years, you know. Right. That's right. And now he's like telling my son stories about things he did back in the day. And I'm like, oh, Dad, why don't you tell me that? Well, you never asked. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> funny that happens with dads. My dad did the same thing. We like we were so such a non-demonstrative family. It's like, yeah, okay, see you later. All okay, right, you know, but then as my dad got older and uh, I love you. Oh, okay, I uh, love you. Love you <laughs> yeah. too. It's like, yeah. love you too. Like, like, even this day, my sister and I hang up the phone saying, love you, love you. And it's like, it still feels awkward to me. <laughs> why, why though? That's a, yeah. why, why is it awkward? We, because we weren't raised in a way where we we showed those kind of feelings, like he's like, oh, I love you so much, and that, and ultimately we had a very competitive relationship between my siblings and I. There were six of us because it was like fending for yourself. It was like being more raised, like being raised in a litter. And six. So that's, yeah. So that's that's why it seems weird when you're like, you know, you're in your thirties, and all of a sudden your dad's saying, "I love you." Oh, oh, I oh, love you too, love you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just weird. Like Dean. <laughs> Dean, every time he hangs up, tells me he loves me. And I'm like, oh, God. I do that, too. I do that, too, with a with a good friend of mine because he had a similar situation. And um, I'm wondering if not saying I love you to somebody is this this uh, this this way of like instilling competition and toughness. Like, mm. I'm not going to love breaks down that. You got to earn it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Although I will say you'll get to be about my age. And as my, my youngest is about to go off to college and it's just going to be this empty nest. I am struck by moments of like, ah, I wish I had, I should have, did I mess that up? And you just, it's just like the thing that's like, like floods me with memories is like, I remember like little videos, like videos of them as little toddlers and like, yeah, dad, dad, what team do you want to be on the blue team or the red team? And, and you be blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm thinking, wow, that goes like that. And then you go, oh, well, I got the grandkids, hopefully. <laughs> but- <laughs> right. Yeah, you get a new, you get a new kid every couple of years. You get a, a new model. Like well, uh, what happened to that other kid who liked this and that and was so weird and others, oh, oh, I've got this new kid I got to deal with. It's, it's interesting. Well, when, when my son was born, uh, maybe about a year after he was born, everyone's like, don't have another kid because your next one is going to be a total asshole. <laughs> don't have <laughs> right. another kid. And right. I'm like, Cause... really? And we didn't. We, you know, we decided just to, just to have one. one and, and, and it's interesting because you get, it's, I think people who have one kid are in, almost in the same boat of people that don't have kids at all, where you're like, why do you only have one? And versus like, why don't you have kids? This weird social thing that goes on, you know, like, why is, what's up with that? Uh, but it is interesting with, with kids, like, yeah, you have that, you have your phone and you're looking back on these memories and you get all emotional because everything can be saved now because of iPhone, yes. right? Yes. Every moment versus when our parents had us, they didn't have that. They had the the 12 clicks on the, you know, little camera with the, with right. the, with the flash cubes or whatever. Turned, right. The click, 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 four, oh, four. Click. Four shots per cube. And then you get all emotional. You think, okay, this, this time is so fleeting. It's over. And yeah, your kids are gone. And, you know, Dean, you have, your kid is, he's in middle 11. school now, right? Starts next year, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you got a few more years of him being at, the, yeah. at home. <laughs> so is the answer now to just say, I love you as much as possible? Or is it? Yes. Um, yeah. Dean's I think really so. good. Dean's really good about that. I, I, I was joking before, but he really is. Dean, Dean is... Uh, very good about saying I love you and and saying and, and talking calmly. I was raised in a house where everyone yelled. Everyone yelled in my house. <clears throat> and so the only way we really like ever learned to show caring was just through fighting. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was just fighting. You know, we cared about something. But um, yeah, I agree. I think the, the yes, it, Dustin, to answer your question, yes, say I love you whenever you can. That's my Dean. Do you come from a big family? Well. No, no, small. Um, uh, I was the only child, and you know. H- hence why you have such an insane ego. Because you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what people say. It's that's true. People, well, one child, only child syndrome. Yeah, this guy's gonna be true. strung out when he's twenty. Yeah, I wasn't strung out when I was twenty, but yeah, huge ego. <laughs> true. I, that well, why, I mean, that's why people get in in the movies because they're like, you know what? Not enough people see me, and I think people need to go into a dark room and see my face forty feet tall. Because that's that's a job that I want. I want I want people to look at me and go, "Yeah, that dude." So that's. But on the other side, he's right. But on the other side, you can be the last of six, which was me, and you want attention because all, right. there's so many kids. So it's the same kind of thing. Right, right. It's like, yeah, not enough people are paying attention to me. Right. That's why you guys are perfect for each other because yes, exactly <laughs> one end of the spectrum to the other. That is true. That is true. And we meet at self-loathing. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. That Venn diagram is like, and then, and then there's this, this big self-loathing. Right there. I, well, I just I, think that I want to come back to summer school for a second yeah. because yeah. because in, in, in summer I school. Me that. <laughs> that. Uh, because, well, Chainsaw Chainsaw is such a jerk to Shoop. You know, he's such a jerk where he's, he's drinking, you know, you, you show up drunk or you are you, right. uh, uh, you know, you trash his car. Right. And, and, and there's never and Shoop is constantly looking out for you, constantly like trying to help you. Right. And you finally have your turn at the end, so to speak. Uh, and then, and then Richard though has these moments. I was, Dustin and I were talking about this. Two moments that really stand out to me as a, as an actor, where we we thought, okay, this is Richard like really hitting his groove. Uh, one is with Denise when you find out that she's dyslexic, mm-hmm. right? Where I see and you go paper. up to shoot, mm-hmm. and you have to tell him. Yeah. And it, I mean, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because you play that scene so damn well. Can you talk about that scene specifically? Yeah, because, you know, prior to reading the script, 
I was just very much the nerd and I looked at things that way, which, as you know, I've told you about that in the past where I just like, there's what's, where's, where's, what, what's my story here? And that's the thing. If you look at throughout the thing, Ikian wants to help. <laughs> he wants to help. He wants to negotiate for the class. You know, Ikian doesn't fit in. But when, when I see um, Denise's uh, paper where it's written backwards, um, I, I remember uh, the, the cinematographer on our shoot, David, was it David Walsh? Dean, you remember? I think that was right, yeah, David Walsh. Walsh. Yeah. He came up to me and he said, he goes, you know what? Try listening a little more. Hmm. I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, he goes, try listening because mm-hmm. you're, you come from TV and stage, which is true, I did. And he goes, the screen is just giant. He said, just listen. And I remember that when I looked at, at her, her paper, that was like an insight. And I owe a lot to Dean, uh, to Dean. Oh, I do owe it to Dean, but to <laughs> David, um, just to take it in. And Dean will help me with auditions to this day for on-camera stuff or opportunities. And um, he'll say, he'll say, just, just you. Let's Dean will say, just you. And he's helped me book a lot of things because I, I, I haven't been, I haven't been on camera in forever. But when I do have an opportunity, I get that anxiety we've talked about before. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And Dean is my first go-to person, and and he'll say, just, just be you. <laughs> Just be you. He has to remind me of what I teach all the time. Right. And so that that scene was was very important to me because I'd had that conversation with the cinematographer. And so when I went up to shoot, I just I just if this were really happening to me, this is exactly how I would go up and do it. You know, in, in your early years of acting, there's this tendency to want to show, you know, what you're supposed to be thinking in this story. You know, it's indicating, as they call it, an acting class. But I didn't. I just looked at it and I said, here, this is your problem, shoot. Fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I really connected to the idea, you know, Richard. Obviously, Zach and I are were students of yours, and you talking about that time in your life where, prior to working with Diana Castle, how everything was indeed just like this is my idea of what a nerd is, yeah. and it's and it's interesting, you know, knowing you now and then going back and seeing like, oh, this is how you were approaching that yeah. in this character of Alan. Yeah. Um, and then kind of seeing how that evolved. I thought that was, it's just really fascinating. Yeah. Dean, Dean at one point did this thing where we did a, like before it was like real common on, on bonus features on DVDs. Dean had this website where we'd come in and we'd watch a, a movie and we would do a, an audio, audio commentary. commentary. Yes. And um, as we were doing, as we were doing the audio commentary when we finished, and I'm, I think that's really also where Dean and I started to re- yeah, that's it. That's that true. is. It is. Um, after we did that, um, it was counter to what I had been doing with the way I approached work after that. And I came out and I said to Dean, I said, well, I have a hard time watching that now. Mm. And Dean said, why? I said, because it's just so cliche, nerd, over the top, blah, blah, blah. And Dean just said, it was the 80s. That's how we acted then. <laughs> totally. It's true. That's it. It's true. If you look at all of our sitcoms from that era, that's what it was, you know? But, I mean, yeah. I personally love that. It, it it doesn't, I know I'm sure as a performer and I cringe at some, some of the things I do as well, where I'm like, Ooh, yeah, it didn't feel right or whatever. And it must, it's different. You know, how, how often do you hear people say, well, I don't watch the work I do. I just, you know, once it's done, it's, it's done. Um, we, we, we were they interviewing actually Hart. do. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm like eh, a little bit, right. Yeah. We were interviewing uh, Hart Bachner on an earlier episode. And he was saying that he's like, oh, I never, I, he's, he goes, he saw Die Hard recently. He played Ellis in Die Hard, you know, Hans, Bubby, I'm your white knight. And, um, and he said, that's the first, he, they did a screening at the Egyptian, I think in like 2019. He's like, that's the first time I've seen that movie on screen wow. since I made it, you know? And it makes sense. Cause you, you think, oh, I don't want to look at this, but, but then you, you do look back and you go, well, I should have done that better, but you guys, and I keep going, I go back to what I said earlier these performances are so to me they're unique like Ikian, yeah he's a nerd cliche but he's in summer school like he's still he's yeah. not the top of the pop you know what i'm saying yeah. like yeah so you're you're not the cliche to me to me you're like oh that's an interesting twist like this guy yeah. is a nerd but he's in summer school okay and then <laughs> right 
and then chainsaw you're so angry with your name right francis Bramp, right <laughs> yeah and uh, as a kid i didn't like my name i was like zach zach i want to be called jet <laughs> for some oh, reason wow. i'm gonna yeah. six <laughs> um but but you, your character too it's like i identified so much with horror films uh, as a kid i still do in many ways oh, cool. and i watched so many horror films in many ways yes you still do <laughs> i do you, dustin knows i i do in many ways oh, um and so to me it was a unique to see someone on screen like with that love of horror and gore <laughs> and just be still just a teenager you know he's like a normal kid he's not going to go out and kill a bunch of people you know right you know it's really when, cool yeah. really cool to you know we do uh i call them has been autograph conventions and meeting <laughs> people uh and I also get on instagram meeting people who are in uh, special effects makeup because of summer school uh, oh, it's, wow. it, it really neat like it's like i want to do that i want to be like that guy and that's uh it, it, it's really touching and really cool i mean you know I, I didn't write the part so someone else wrote that wrote that but that they that i sort of uh, was the conduit from the writer to these people to be inspired for a career it's pretty neat do you ever go to uh, ski conventions where they say uh <laughs> <laughs> i want to be a skier <laughs> Yes. No. Good answer. You know, I, but I do No, I do actually there are, I get, you know, there's that, ca that cameo thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right, where, yeah. Uh, but I get, there's two people so far who they go skiing and they call themselves section eight from ski school. And they have me give an inspirational talk to the, the guys. <laughs> oh it's it just kind of cool. So, I love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that just reminded me. Oh, one of my favorite moments. Oh, oh no, I was going to say Rick Baker. So I was at right. Comic-Con like four or five years ago and um, I was doing this, it was like a press junket photo shoot because Florpus was coming out and they were honoring Rick Baker and Rick was there and I went up to him and I go, excuse me. And he looked at me and he goes, Ikean, and he remembered <laughs> it. He gave me a hug. I mean, I just loved Rick. Rick was one of the greatest guys. He or is one of the greatest guys. Yeah. Um, my my favorite moment in summer school, and it's it's probably, and I laugh every time I see it, is when Denise is learning to drive in Shoop's car, and Dean is in the back seat, and she looks, and then he looks, and she looks back, and she looks again, and Dean is just every time she looks, <laughs> it, it's it's like perfect. It was so good. Dean that Dean came up with that. That was Dean's thing. It was yeah. brilliant. And that's, that's what happened. Like we just got lapped by a lady <laughs> in a, oh, yeah, in a wheelchair. wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much Super were you allowed to improvise on that film? Uh, yeah, a, a bit. You know, I, um, the script was so good and well written that you didn't really need to. But there were there were bits where we ad lib some stuff. Like "Have a Cow" was ad libbed, and uh, "Damn It" was ad libbed. Damn it oh, was, was ad libbed. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, right. Wow. That right. was my ad lib. But I will tell you this. Um, yeah, we play a lot. We play a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. and Carl would see us yeah. and he'd say, let's shoot that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ki was kiss my longer hair improvised, but I didn't even know what that when my logger head. <laughs> was, what, right. what did he say? Yeah. Like suck kiss my logger my... head or. Yeah. Logger <laughs> head. Yeah. Logger <laughs> head. I always thought he said longer hair. hair. Logger, like beer, right? Logger head, right? <laughs> well, that I makes more sense. Is that Scuzzy guy who said that? Is that mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Scuzzy kid. Yeah. Scuzzy kid. kid. And there's that moment where 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 um, Dean says or where Shane says this to Dave, you passed and I failed. You passed and I failed. He goes, I can take it again. Oh, I can fail next. <laughs> it's just like my favorite moment. Yeah. One of my yeah. those are my favorite moments. In it. I think many there's ways. A scene, there's no, a scene ahead. that was cut that I, I'm bummed about that and and it but there's two scenes with with Dave and Chainsaw that were cut. And one of them was after the party, after the 4th of July party, Shoop drives us home and uh, I vomit on my dad. <laughs> uh, and which was totally like, oh, I remember this. I can play this scene because this is my high school. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was another scene where we, uh, Anna Maria takes her top off and runs into the ocean and Dave and I proposed to her <laughs> uh, and she says, no, we're, we're, we're too young. 
but we'll be friends. So it was nice. It was a sweet scene. Oh, Fabiana. There's yeah. a oh, there's yeah. a scene that they cut. That and I shot. wrote a whole thing on at DeanCameron.com. There's a whole essay about that day because she actually took her top off and uh, we're shooting in, in Malibu. And that just happened to be the day where every studio executive decided to come visit the set of summer school. <laughs> <laughs> they just show up and we were on the, in the water and I look up and they're, they're like, half a mile away just all these dudes in suits in front of their bmws like wow eh, just just just, just oh, hanging out on the set it's crazy ridiculous just and make sure we're not got... wasting money yeah exactly <laughs> and that's uh, how she got bride of reanimator yeah. yes no and i don't know <laughs> there was a scene uh where we shot for the for, for the first half of the day was is when my grandmother lillian adams great actress great drops me off and um, she she kisses me goodbye, but it, the idea was that it was going to be this really traumatic thing to be kissed by your grandmother as you're being dropped off at school, and it was on the lips, and they shot it in a 360 degree <laughs> shot around around and around. So we kissed, <laughs> Lillian Adams and I kissed for like three minutes as oh. we're doing it with each take. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I loved it. I mean, love it. I mean, love it. I'm just loved saying, it. I'm, not, I'm not going like that because it's like so hot. Yeah, I'm just remembering it. But they cut that scene. <laughs> That's too bad. That's yeah. 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 It would have oh. gotten them a rated X. Uh, X uh, ratings. <laughs> you you just triggered you triggered a memory in me being dropped off at school. Was that ever an awkward thing for you guys being dropped off at school? That's just the memory. Well, I, I, I used to be, so my, my mom, my stepdad, who I was very close to, um, he was a tile contractor and he drove a really old beat up truck, flatbed truck, beautiful truck. Oftentimes people would be like, how much you want for your truck? I'll buy it from you, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't like it because it sounded like the, it was the creakiest freaking thing on the planet. Every time, every time it hit a bump, <laughs> right? You were embarrassed by it. I was so embarrassed by it. Oh. And he would take me to school in it, you know, and we pull up in front of this. I, we went to a pretty affluent high school in Cupertino, which is, you know, obviously. Oh, yeah. And, um, my, and my clock knows that. My, my, yeah, athlete, your, my, my your clock. Oh, knows right. thing. <laughs> and we pull up and I'm just like, could you just drop me off on the corner and I'll walk the rest of the way? He's like, why? Oh. You know, what's the big deal? I'm like, well, just uh, please, please just drop me off. He's like, no, I'm please. pulling you right up in front. And it was kind of an Uncle Buck moment where he was like honking the horn. I'll see you later. And I'm just like, I hate you, but I love you. I just escaped a kidnapping. Ah. <laughs> right. It was uh, it, the, the trauma for me was after getting dropped off. So mm. that was. <laughs> well, me too. But <laughs> high school was not a fun time. No. For, for I think for many people. Yeah. I think learning was not a fun time for me. <laughs> that too. I, that too. To this day, uh, my wife Kristen and I will go to like some back to school night or something where it's like a teacher parent, you know, thing. <clears throat> and I still will take the seat in the farthest back <laughs> seat in the back of the class. And every now and then Kristen will look at me and she'll glance and she'll say, Mike, you're still fidgety. She's just like, you know what? Why don't you just go and I'll take the notes? I'll just uh, fill you in because I, I, I could not sit in a class. I just couldn't. It was the worst. It was, so I joked. Would you have had a standing desk if you it, nowadays? No, and I'm, I I'm not joking, by the way. I would not have been in school. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I know it's horrible to say, but I, I did well. I mean, I got by, but that's what I always felt like. I always felt like I got by yeah. in yeah. school. I did what was expected of me. I did fine. I got into UCLA. I wouldn't get into UCLA today by any stretch of the imagination today. Mm. Um, and I just, you know, you can, I can tell you one thing, but as I got older, um, I became more autodidactic where I taught myself things I was interested in. I was really interested in, in history and I was interested in, you know, I studied, um, you know, Eastern first thing he taught philosophy. himself was the word autodidactic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. Exactly. I'm like, what the hell? That's good. Write that down. We'll use that for Damn. SKJ. Um, ask Siri that <laughs> ask Siri, um, and I just, the things I was interested, I read a lot of biographies. I taught myself to play the guitar, not well, as Dean will tell you. I brought my guitar to the summer school set one day. Way and, to throw Dean under the bus. Yeah, yeah. No, but he'll tell you this because I, I'm i not, like Dean taught taught himself to play guitar and the bass. And he, Dean's a musician. And um, 
I brought my guitar to this set one day and I'm trying to learn to play Cat Stevens um, Wild World. And I've got the guitar, the guitar chords down very slowly. Dean's like, oh, Wild World, Cat Stevens. Like, yeah, I guess let me have that. And he goes, he takes it and he plays like, do, 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 C chord, right? C chord, it's C, do, 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 oh, baby. I'm like, okay, I'm done with guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I crushed his dreams. She crushed, I crushed, he crushed my dreams. That's what I and do. You were that kid in high school for him. <laughs> yes. Dream crusher. Exactly. Yes. All these chicks flock over to you. Oh my God, totally. Yes. <laughs> so I started playing like, guitar. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, let's be yeah, honest. Everyone. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Rockula, you know. So. <laughs> yes, Rockula. <laughs> um, but thank connect. you guys for coming on the show. This is really course, awesome. Truly an honor. Appreciate it. So good to see you virtually. Yes. Thanks for your good time. You guys too. Say hi to Aaron for me. I will. And say hi to your family, also, Zach, and give Bodie a hug. I will for sure. Okay. And uh, we'll catch you guys in hey, the. Guys, I love you. I love, love you. you. I okay. love you too. Love yeah, you. there you go.